Hi, everybody. The beginning of this year was so startling in its energetic imprint that I thought, I want to get a really clear idea of what's coming up. Um, many of us have heard throughout the last few years that we're going into a time that is going to be more challenging, um, also breaking way and giving way to something much greater, and that we've all chosen to volunteer for this. We're all incarnated this time, meaning we're on board for what's going on, and we're all going to handle it in the way we handle it, depending on our levels of willingness to be able to just let go and flow a little bit, not have so much resistance to what's coming up because this is a time of revolution. So to give you a little clearer idea, I thought what I'd do is chat with a lot of my colleagues and friends, um, almost all of whom you know, about 2024. And in fact, I just got off of a wonderful hour and a half conversation, just a private conversation with Barbara Hanclow on a number of topics, but we did get to 2024. And it's fascinating because the same themes are rising again and again. And I'm going to share with you what she had to say and with a few other astrologers and seers had to say as well, and my own guides. Uh, at the very end, I'm going to share a little transmission from them that I think feeds really nicely into the theme that lies ahead. So the big player is Pluto. And Pluto is moving into Aquarius, and that's a that's a long haul project. And the wonderful thing about this is Capricorn, which is in until now, until the twentieth of January, twenty twenty four, is uh, has to do with structure. It has to do with uh, institutions, and it has to do with more kind of linear way of structuring uh, reality, society at large, and that is going to be crumbling. We're already seeing that uh, many, many of the types of institutions we've relied on are almost becoming artifacts as we, as I'm talking right now. And it's going to give way to Aquarius. And Aquarius is, well, one of the people I talked to was Sheila Gillette. I'll get to that in a minute, but she's been talking for 50 years, the Theo group, about this period of time that has finally arrived. And in this age of Aquarius, as it were, this time of Aquarius, we are going to see these top-down structures continue to crumble, and I'll get into what each individual had to say about this, although it all comes out the same, really. And we're going to have kind of distributed power systems, major, major innovations, major grassroots uh, uptick. And of course, a lot of this is going to rely on the younger generations who have nothing to lose. Um, don't know a lot of stuff yet, so they can go with new systems entirely and are um, courageous by nature. You know, the Zs, is a big part of the Z generation is the Scorpio generation, and uh, they're willing to burn the house down and start over, and they're doing some very interesting things. So congrats, Zs, for some uh, original thinking when you can get off of your devices and not be succumbing to the algorithms at large, which is a challenge for all of humanity at this time, as we know, but especially for young people. And the ones that are coming off and are, are literally reinforcing each other in these new innovations and innovations of thought and feeling, it's really, that's what the future is about. So that happens on the 20th of January. Pluto goes into Aquarius. The house starts burning down, and we start inventing underneath. So let me first go to um, Barbara, a couple of things she said. And again, I just typed this up a second ago because she's. Um, we just got off the phone or off of a Zoom meeting, actually. So I said to just you know, crystallize it down to a few words, what's 2024 about? And she said, revolution and civil war. Uh, this is going to come up again through another reading. Um, in fact, revolution comes up in every single one and civil war. But when we're talking about civil war, because we're going to have so many things in our face, um, the U.S. coming elections this year, of course, is going to have a big impact, not just on the U.S., but on what plays out around the world, as it, it always seems to. Um, this whole rise in autocrats, strongmen, um, even dictatorships uh, is natural. I mean, it's actually kind of natural that this would be happening at this time. Uh, and the reason is because as we become more afraid of the unknown, people losing their bearings in terms of what they become accustomed to in life, what they prefer in life, that list of preferences is going to have to be set aside, my friends. <laughs> we're not going to have all our preferences met anymore. And I mean, on some really essential levels, we're going to have to learn to be collaborative and learn to be um creative. 
and inter- and start integrating all of this. And speaking truth to power is a really big part of it. So I think her feeling is it doesn't mean that it has to be civil war as in the civil war, blood in the streets per se, but it does mean that there is going to be great amount of friction and clashing. And it could happen by way of info wars, by way of media, by shutting sites down, people down, starting to restrict freedom of speech, which then we get to blow back against. So that's really critical to understand that this year represents this kind of revolution and a kind of civil war. And I'm seeing this play out. I just got back from Germany and England. Same kind of trends are happening in these countries. It's not exclusive to the U.S. Um, I know some friends of mine are moving away from the U.S. saying, you know, oh, this is the center of all evil. And then once it, once the economy goes sideways, then um, it's all over. Well, newsflash, once it happens in the U.S., it's going to start happening everywhere. In fact, already is. It's already happening in the U.S. It's already happening everywhere else. So, we, I think finding the place you love, finding the place where your heart feels at home is really critical in the times coming because 2024 is really just the beginning of it. Um, I'll go through a couple other players and what they had to say, but it is just the beginning of it. So we got to put our big boy and big girl under britches on, as Larry the Cable Guy would say. It's time. We've talked about it for decades, and the time is now right on our doorstep. And so... I'll talk a little bit at the end about some of the coping mechanisms that actually help refine us as souls. So uh, Barbara is also saying the same thing. She's been diving really, really deep into the structures and control systems that are, you know, have really had those people of this planet gripped for a very long time, thousands of years. And those are going to be more exposed. Uh, 2024 is going to be a year of great revelations and great exposure of lies and truth starting to rise to the surface, even more than what we've already seen. And we're already seeing a great amount of this. It's very encouraging. People are speaking up. They're speaking truth to power of these untenable situations that are playing out around Earth, such as what's happening in the Middle East and what's happening in Ukraine. These are just a couple of examples of whatever side you choose to be on, there is great tumult that's occurring and it's forcing us to reach deep down into our psyche and into our hearts and saying, what is fair? What is fair? We can't go with these old paradigms. We can't go with the old trusted leaders. There are no leaders on the stage right now that really deserve being trusted, in my opinion. Now, on a local level, entirely different thing. And we'll get to that too. So um, the other thing that she said, which is really, to me, the most important for all of us, and and I'll get around to this again through a slightly different take at the end of this uh, little commentary. And that has to do with now we have to stand up and start using our multidimensional minds. This is critical. And this is something that has been coming on for a long time. I feel as strongly as Barbara does about this. We cannot afford to have the luxury of indulging habitual thoughts and emotions from the past. Those were all born out of a paradigm that is literally dying. We have to now recalibrate to what we see as genuinely helpful, useful, caring, loving, compassionate, collaborative. Those are the words of the future. That is the new paradigm, like it or not, that's popping up. And that means some of these top-down control systems and players that we've been attached to aren't going to be of any service to us. So in that sense, she said, if you see a situation that you would wish for there to be a higher outcome from, Put your multidimensional mind to use, choose that outcome, and when that subject comes up, be very disciplined and stay very clear and focused toward the outcome you wish to see. Both of us talked about Atlantis, Atlantean times. Um, She's been delving deeply into some of the work that's that's emerging, really beautiful work, um, foundational Um, breakthrough work uh, that is starting to rise up now on the understanding of what Atlantis was, where it was, how it went down, what the society was like, how people use their minds in the higher times. I was there and I was part of that. And I can attest to what Barbara is saying. We were able to use our minds in a very, very focused, 
powerful way that would affect physical reality. And many of you are healers. Many of you can do remote healing. It's These are just remnants of these talents we've brought forward from other times. These are going to come into play and be needed very strongly. But this doesn't need to be just applied to us as individuals to help a friend um, who's feeling ill. Um, this is to help a planet that is ill at this time. And for purpose, it's going through its fever so that we can literally pop through into the new Aquarian paradigm. And this is critical to get. If we're hanging on to anything that the old institutions supported, we're on the wrong track. And this gets scary because that's all we know. And we'll get to the economic part in just a moment, because that's what scares people, I think, quite a lot, aside from death. <laughs> so, yes, things are changing. So, yes, as she says, collapse these thoughts into crystal and clear intentions for what you want the outcome to be. Anybody watching this is watching because you're already pretty far down your path. You already understand how powerful the mind is. We're decades past understanding the mind-body connection. Now we can use our minds to heal societies, to heal literally conflict on earth. These experiments have been done for decades and they do bear out. The problem is coming together and doing it. And in lieu of having a really clear place for humanity to come together, we can start doing it individually because each one of these seeds does start shifting the ultimate outcome. Every single seed of intention and thought does have an impact. So we have to start. We don't have the luxury of not doing it now. So then yesterday, I spoke for quite a long time with my friends, Sheila and Marcus Gillette. And then um, I said, hey, how about, they, in fact, they were kind enough to even offer, because I told them I'm really curious about 2024. And they said, hey, let's just do a session with Theo. So I did a th session with the Theo group, asking them some, again, very foundational questions, kind of keeping it to our sovereignty, governments. Uh, economy, and so forth. So one of the things I asked them, same thing, how would you characterize in a few words 2024? And without missing a beat, Theo said, chaos. And if you're familiar, and I know you've watched Theo before, they have one constant message and theme, and that is once we truly begin understanding that we are souls that chose to come here together, we all make this incredible tapestry of life on earth. Every different level of understanding, preference, uh, feeling, we're different flavors of ice cream. Every one of us brings a different flavor uh, to this, what they call a very beautiful tapestry of humanity who is now chosen to incarnate at a time of chaos and revolution. And they said the chaos will absolutely lead to order, but not without our purposeful intent. So you see, this is reflected in Barbara Hanklau's work as well. We have to show up. We have to be clear in our intention. And so they're saying we have a lot of theater coming up for 2024 in American politics, which things tend to be American centric only because it does seem to have ripples elsewhere. And they said, uh, let the drama, let the comedy play out. Let these players play all of this old, old stuff out. The fact is it's up to us to choose what we want. If we don't want to uphold these players, then change it. And they said, you have to participate now. This is no longer a time to sit and witness or be depressed or indulge in, you know, pity for ourselves. This is a time to stand up with our own internal authority. And they said that several times and begin making our intentions known. And they said, very important for everybody to get up this time, go to the voting polls, do something that simple, but actually show up. Don't just be an armchair quarterback commenting on what the other team is doing and how disgusting it is. Show up and do something about it. And they too, like Barbara, this is a time of action and clear thought and remembrance that we are divinely, unconditionally loving souls at our core. Our spirit is a divine, unconditionally loving being at the core, all here playing in this classroom. Every one of us is still trying to figure part, pieces of it out. Some are struggling more than others, no doubt about it. And we have to help our brothers and sisters who are struggling. 
And I'll get to this in a little bit, but compassion and collaboration, again, is critical. And they said, as Barbara said, this time of revolution is incredible. It's going to allow for advancement of innovation. I hope you're enjoying this video because if you are, there are dozens more like it on my site, all supported by people like you. So if you'd like to keep this work rolling in and join our community, just click on the Patreon button at reginameredith.com. That also gives you access to insider commentary, my live book club, and other live events with special guests. So join in. Thanks. Now that gets into the Z's too. You know, I had a very long talk with the Z's over the course of four days with Lee Harris and our books coming out in May, I believe, about the future human. But what they said about the future, same thing about right now, 2024 and the next 10 years, upheaval, chaos, crumbling of all old institutions. They don't work anymore. Same thing Barbara said. Same thing the Theo group said. They don't work anymore. And they said this is going to be a time of just exploding, mushrooming innovation. And that innovation at a grassroots level that we share with each other, open source it, that is going to be the beginning of the new paradigm, the age of Aquarius that is truly coming alive now. It's already started. Uh, we can each look around and it, it, you were just amazing as creators. Human beings are incredibly creative. I mean, quirky as we are, we can create and we're creating solutions to pretty much everything on a small scale. Those will gain strength in numbers. And the best of the best will start rising to the surface to start replacing these crumbling institutions. So they said um, one of the things uh, was about the economy, uh, which I asked, I asked them about. Uh, and also, I would just want to add a Z's overlay to it. So they said, oddly, that the economy would do better than we're expecting because of these innovations coming up underneath. Yes, it'll be very unstable for a while. So we have to use our intuition, put our money where our, our hearts and our beliefs are, whatever that may be. We're each different that way. But if we're going to look at, you know, day trading and um, derivatives and all of these fancy economic instruments that are just short of criminal, really. <laughs> uh, that's not really a good way to go. Uh, not that there aren't some good stocks out there and some good companies. There certainly are. But start really using our intuition and going down more deeply into the value of what that thing is that we're going to invest in. Is it is it in harmony with where Earth and its people are headed? Is it something that is going to make us expansive and creative and give more power and life to us as earthlings, or is it going to draw away from that? So you just have to be much more discerning in whatever we choose to invest our money in. But they said the hallmark of it is just the incredibly innovative uh, products that are going to come up in financial markets and arenas and product arenas. And one thing that is kind of touchy, and I and I talked about it with them for a reason, and that is that. 12 years ago, I was talking to them about the economy. So 12 years ago would have been uh, 2000, maybe it might have been even longer than that. I think it was like 2010 or 11. We just come out of the 2008 financial crisis. Um, and they said, in the world you're coming into, there is going to be a global currency and I heard that and, you know, my ears perked up like everybody's like, global currency, you meaning even more power uh, and control over money, put in even fewer hands. And they said, it's not going to work like that. You, They said you are already globally connected economically. You can't undo that now. It's already happened. And so now what will happen is there will rise a type of currency for all people to use so they can exchange easily with one another. But the way it's operated will be personal, local, innovative, regional. It's not like that currency will control us, but will control how we're going to use that currency. I don't know what that is or what it's going to look like. Everybody's talking about the RV and all this, but that's coming from more corrupt uh, kinds of forces at this point in time it's, it's not necessarily it, it doesn't seem to me that that's here to serve all just yet and we're going to find new ways to serve all crypto is probably part of that and there will be other products besides crypto that come along that might feel a little more safe you know to jump into or a little more easily accessible than crypto but all of those things are on the horizon again they emphasize 
we're a global community. We're a global people. There are no lines when you look down on earth between countries. There's no reason to keep separating ourselves out from each other. This time of Aquarius is the people of earth the human beings coming together beyond top-down structures. And again, they emphasize rapid, rapid innovation is going to be happening on all sectors of life, education, all of it. So they're, they're seeing this as a very powerful time, but they say the key is we have to begin to understand that we and everyone we look into the eyes of is a beautiful spirit of unconditional love deep at the core, underneath all of the human persona, and to respect that first and come from that uh, place of unconditional love. So same thing, I already told you about disease, shockingly quick innovations. And they, what they said, along with the she, Sheila uh, Gillette and the, the Theo group, is that um, the denigration of the economy we're expecting a massive crisis it's going to literally turn us into something akin to what happened during the great depression they said actually it's not going to play out like that uh you know the factors that are mounting would seem to indicate it would go like that but they said it's not going to be as harsh as that that's from the z's um Theo saying the same thing. It's not going to be that harsh. I think what's happening is we're having enough clarity of thinking and innovation coming in from the bottom and astuteness among humans to say, you know, I think I'm going to get out of that market or that one. We're having enough of that going on for the thinking people of Earth that, um, and maybe even some of the desperation of the controllers that they're not done with us yet. They still need our participation. Whatever. They didn't tell me how. They just said it's not going to be as bad as we're expecting. Okay, so we'll take that for what it is and just prepare in our own ways, aligning our hearts and our ethics and our care with our money. Okay, and um, Belinda and the Archangel said this year, I asked them, what is the big word for the year? They said reckoning. This is a time of reckoning. Truths, both external and internal, have to start coming out now. We can't hide from our own internal truths that may be uncomfortable, just like we can't hide from the external truths that are going to be showing themselves to us. So again, I've been saying, using this term for years now, we are in the time of revelations. So that revelation, we have to use the revelations that come out of us on a personal level to transform ourselves just as the external world is transforming as well. And the Theo group said that too, our internal transformation will drive the external transformation. So on that note, I'm going to be doing an interview with Belinda tomorrow, and we're going to get down to uh, certainly the greatest fear um, of most people and uh, what this year has in store for us more on a deeper level and the reality of the greatest fear of humanity, which is the loss of our lives. Now, that happens on many levels. It can happen as a loss of our egoic life. Um, and our ego is certainly going to have to take a back seat to these changes because they are more collaborative in nature. And so we can't just stand out as individuals, you know, here to do our thing. Our thing is a piece of everything. So we have to keep that in mind. So we'll learn more from Belinda tomorrow. Meanwhile, I want to close this little commentary out with uh, a conversation I had with my own guides a few days ago. And uh, I was chatting with them every now and then. I'll feel a very strong urge to sit down, get my computer, put it in my lap, close my eyes and be quiet. Just sit there and see what shows up. And it was one of those. They were My guides wanted to speak to me. So I was uh, doing auto typing. Just I close my eyes and I look at it later and see what comes out. And this was the most important part that they wanted me to share. And so I'm going to read it to you literally because I don't think that I can paraphrase it as well as they put it. And the words, specific words do have meaning. So this is their piece of it. And I think after that, we'll just get into a few ways that we can stop from blowing up all our relationships during this time of chaos. And this piece here is, is a hint. This is a big one. It said, the greatest message you can share is that this change upon you has been awaited and is necessary. Much has been learned over the past few hundred years, and the planet as a whole is a more compassionate place. Remember this. 
Now it's time for the next more refined level of compassion, connection, and care. Those who are more spiritually refined will understand this immediately. It is time to let go of the guilty pleasure of judgment. We told you this long ago. They did. They talked to me about this 30, 40 years ago. That the world would be a different place once judgment has been weighed on their words. You have all become habituated to sensing self against others through the manipulations of those in hidden places. This now ends. This is a new level of spiritual, mental, and emotional discipline that will ultimately free your energy fields and hearts. You will be amazed upon practicing this that new thoughts, ideas, and creativity can flood into the being as it is not holding fast to an old sense of self, an old sense of one's value, which is contractive by nature. Once you choose not to judge oneself against others, the world is born anew as you are then open to the influences of others in a positive way rather than a negative one of competition and threat, which has been inculcated into the people of earth. These ways are now dying as you are witnessing. This will take discipline and courage. Practice this yourself and see what we're telling you. It is a beautiful release. So as they were talking, I was feeling everything they were saying. And I could feel what how insidious it is that throughout the day, all day, every day, someone says something we don't like, boom, we close down and go into a little bit of judgment. You know, and this is happening all day. We have always been weighing ourselves against others. Well, certainly for the last several thousand years anyway. And when I started practicing the next day when something would come up that may not be my preference, I would just let it go, let it flow through me like water. And the amount of energy it takes to create the resistance that judgment calls for is incredible. (laughs) This was, it was the first time I understood it on a practical level. you, You know, 30, 40 years ago when they said, once you stop judging one another, your planet changes drastically. I thought, yeah, well, that's a good concept, but I mean, how, how do you do that? I mean, how, where does that begin? And so now they're saying it begins now, and here's how it begins, and here's the gift that it gives to you. So I have been playing with it and practicing it myself, and it really does free up energy. You can just keep moving through life open-hearted, open-minded. And it's not that you have to agree with anything. You may say, yeah, okay, and just let it flow right through, like just flow through like water. And then the other thing is a couple of of tools, um, that alone is extremely helpful. But if we're not quite there yet, and we're not, it's going to take practice. It's going to take the courage to not judge, because that can also separate you from others who get their guilty pleasure from judging, you know, get together, whoop it up, trash someone. Uh, We can't really participate in that anymore. That does not mean that we cannot absolutely disagree wholeheartedly and in spirit with what someone else is saying and doing. That's different than judging. To disagree and say, can I do something about this now? If you cannot, let it pass through. If you can do something, step forward. And as in the first couple of people's comments, take a stand for truth. Don't be angry. Don't be mean-spirited. Say, hey, no, I disagree with you on that. And I don't choose to do it that way. And I'm sorry, but you know, I hope this doesn't cause a problem between us, but I'm making a different choice. That's not judgmental. That's simply speaking truth to power, your truth. And that's what's required in each one of us right now, as scary as it might be, because that means standing up to friends, family, children, uh, co-workers, et cetera. But it's time to do that. The other ones I wanted to add is something that I've learned uh, as a lifetime journalist. And that is, I have a very open mind for the most part, which is why I titled my show at Gaia Open Minds, because I do tend to see things from different perspectives and I have to, to do my job well. And one thing I've learned is that when you get into a contentious situation, it's not like I'm a red hot chili pepper. When I get mad over something, I can, I can like a little chicken stand up and fight. (laughs) So I'm trying to find more graceful ways to do this, but one of the graceful ways to do it, because I do do it also. And that is when someone's confronting you with something that's so foreign to you, don't take an opposing stand. Don't try to convince them. Otherwise ask questions. 
ask questions, ask questions. This is one of the most important things we can do because most people really, really deeply desire to be heard and to be understood. And I've said this before, I've made this comment, everybody's talking, but nobody's listening. It's time now that we have to start listening. Really ask questions and then listen to the person's response. And you can start feeling where they're coming from. It may not be where you're coming from. They've been indoctrinated through whatever system they've been in, whether it's educational, familial, ancestral, geographical, everybody's been programmed. They got their own programs running. So just hear them out, ask questions. And when you get to a point where there's really nothing more to be revealed, just say, well, thank you for sharing that. You know, it helps me understand your position better. And this is the most gracious gift right now I think we can give to each other. When it gets tight, don't jump up. Don't create resistance. It's going to wear you out because it's going to be everywhere. Ask questions. Just simply care. Even if you don't know the person, just care enough to let them have the gift of feeling heard. If we all did this, we'd already be in a different place. So with that, that's my little commentary for 2024. And uh, I wish us all the best of luck in contending with it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you might also want to consider joining Patreon, which allows me to keep all of this content free and available to everyone. And if you're looking for like-minded souls, you might also enjoy my online community called Our Neighborhood. Links to join are in the description.